How's it going everybody? So today I'm going to show you how to overclock your Game Boy Color using a crystal oscillator. And before I get into a little bit of um, how everything works, I'm going to take this apart and then we'll get started. So here is your Game Boy Color taken apart. And this is the crystal oscillator we will be using. So a few things I wanted to run over real quick are that uh, this is your crystal oscillator right there. And your uh, game is, uh, the game speed is going to be running at the speed that the oscillator and the CPU are running at. So the CPU runs at the speed of this. The sound will also match this, uh, the same speed as the CPU. The stock oscillator right here is a 4 megahertz oscillator. So using something like this one, which is a 10 megahertz, we'll run it at about two and a half speed. Um, but you wanna be careful of the speed that you do choose. You can go higher uh, if you would want to, or you can go a little lower, uh, but higher than stock, of course. Uh, but you gotta be aware that depending on the speed you choose, or any speed you choose really, that there is the potential for some damage. Because remember, you're stressing it beyond the factory specification. If you go too fast, uh, the Game Boy might not boot. It may have issues like in the gameplay while you're playing, like glitching graphics, or you might just damage the Game Boy in general. Um, anything can happen, really. So I'll link a video in, uh, below in the description so you can see uh, a video of somebody I saw here on YouTube who uses a variable oscillator machine to show uh, various speeds of uh, what a Game Boy Color uh, looks like during gameplay when modding your uh, Game Boy with a, an overclock mod. So this is the one we're going to be using. Like I said, it is a 10 megahertz. I don't know if you can see that in the focus. But um, basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be wiring this um, up to the oscillator. It has four points, as you can see. There's one right there, there, and then two more on the other side. This one runs this way and this one runs this way, so it doesn't really matter which side you choose. It's just gonna be easier to solder to this side in general. And when you want it, you're gonna end up wanting to tuck it in right in there, just for space reasons. So a couple things I wanna do before I actually get started is I want to tape off this area because with the oscillator in its place, you wanna make sure that you're not um, accidentally shorting anything out when you uh, start soldering. So I've cut off a piece of electrical tape and I'm gonna place it right there since that's where it's gonna be sitting. So a couple things you want to do is you want to uh, solder up a couple wires from here and here. So let me strip a couple wires real quick. And now that I have a couple of wires stripped already, Sorry, trying to get the camera stable. You're gonna wanna prep the points that you have on your oscillator. So, get a little bit right there. You gotta be very careful to not get too much flux on anything else so you don't end up having it where you're getting your, your new solder that you're prepping on here onto something else. And I'm gonna do this. make some room here. You just want to get a little extra. It might be hard to get. There we go. Let's see if I can get it to focus. So now you can see it there. So what you're going to want to do is take your two wires that you had stripped. And you're going to want to Solder these up. I 
my bad. I got it out of the way. There's one right there. And then you want to get the other one right there. Hold on. So what you're going to have now is your oscillator right there and you need to run these along the edge and over. I'll show you in a second. I just need to cut the wires to size. So essentially it's going to look like that. Now getting the wires to um, to solder to these uh, oscillator legs may be a little tricky. Uh, sometimes they're a little bit finicky just because they are, uh, they are coated so they are a little bit um, stubborn. So let me um, quickly strip this wire and then we'll get it on there. With our wire stripped, what you should do is at least tin the wire that you have. So you need a little bit of flux on it. Then you want to tin them up. It's going to make it a lot easier. You can try to get some also on the oscillator legs itself. May or may not stick, but if you get a little bit, that's good. Just need to get a little bit more. Solder. You know what? I wanted to actually have that one on the other one. So let me switch that around real quick. Getting your solder joints on here is not going to be very easy, just considering the oscillator is very finicky. But without being too neat, of course, this is how it's done. So let me uh, fix up this, make it look a little bit better. So I did decide to clean it up a little bit more, shorten the legs, just make the wires a little bit cleaner. And you could tape this down if you want, but nothing's going to be in the way to foul it. So you just take your, just take your uh, 
power switch and install it, get the back cover on, making sure that the oscillator is in place if you did not choose to tape it down. You throw in some batteries, pop in a game. Now I did have to redo this part right here because the video did cut up, get cut off again. And this one has a blown out speaker, so it's, you won't be able to really hear it. It is a lot faster though, but that speaker is blown out. So I will show you what it sounds like on a fully working one that is ha uh, that has not only the sound amp, like the one in the video I last did, but this also has the overclock mod with the same uh, 10 megahertz crystal. And however, this one has a, um, a toggle switch. So I run it so you can toggle between stock speed and the 10 megahertz speed as well. And real quickly, I just want to show that this one has a LiPo battery mod. So that little switch right here, this is to go from uh, normal to quicker. And I'm gonna use the Pokemon Gold again to showcase this. So that should be the normal one. And now I will show you the overclock. I'm going to show you one more game that's also sped up. And in the middle of this, if you have a toggle switch, you can do this. Turn it back to stock. So that's if you have a switch in it though. So I can show that in another video where you want to install a switch into this one and um, getting it cut out is really what you have to do, you have to modify the case a little bit. But that's pretty much how you do it. So this one has like the overclock, the sound amp, everything. It's got a power LED mod, it's got everything. So that is how you overclock your Game Boy Color. And I hope this was helpful. Thank you.